Excellent. This is Teacher Simon for True from True Hebrews United, and we're about to get into the book. It's been long overdue. Welcome to True Hebrews United, the Lord Yeshua, the beloved holiness instructor, discipleship, Joe Sergeant. About to get into the book. We were out three weeks. One week, my voice was shot. The second week, I think it was raining muddy everywhere. And the third week, something was up with the SD card. Hopefully, I fixed it. If not, I got another one going. The camera keeps saying I couldn't read it, so I couldn't record. So I'm ready to get into the scriptures, edify the brothers and sisters across the whole planet. All those, I definitely thank all the ministers across the whole planet getting this gospel out there, saving souls in the trenches, feeding the homeless, doing the work of the Most High, the brothers and sisters across the whole world, and their congregations doing the work, trying to bring souls from darkness to lights and bring the hearts back of the sons and the children back to the Father. We thank the Almighty for that. All, all of them, all the ministers, the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors, the teachers, the elders, the bishops, and the deacons, all those doing the work, all the, uh, especially the congregation, True Hebrews United, the brothers and sisters in Belize, uh, the brother Dawid, uh, Brother Tay, Sister Ahava, uh, Munya B, uh, shout out to you. Um, keep in contact. Hopefully you doing those things that you might be saved. Lord willing, come through. Are you ready to get baptized? We'll, we'll get that in. Um, all the people that watch, thank you for your support and everything. Definitely appreciate all that. Keep pressing and keep standing. Definitely give all honor to the Almighty High who got you sure the only begotten of the Father. Definitely give all honor to Him making the way for me to get this gospel out there to you guys as well as raising me from the dunghill literally came from uh game banging doing all this foolishness chasing women all this stuff and brought me to a point you know there was a point in, in my life where i was living in my ride there's a point in my life where i was living in my ride sister winnie will laugh right now where i was living in my ride when i first came to the gospel and now where i'm at now you know i'm doing much better but um i definitely thank the almighty uh, from that, I was able to own my own company. We're doing some big things for the congregation, be able to open up doorways for the congregation and go from there. So, well, I said being done. <sighs> Let's let the fingers do the walking and the scriptures do the talking. That's right. Isaiah 66. Isaiah chapter 66. And we're going to deal with verse 4. I usually have my pulpit, but I forgot it. It's another ride. I just recently bought a ride, so I got to transfer some stuff over. So when I have service, Isaiah 66. I'm going to start at verse 4. And let's get it. It says, From since the beginning of the world, men have not heard, nor perceived by ear, neither have I seen, O God, besides thee, what have prepared for him that waited for him. So, oh, that was 64. But I was going to deal with that. So, 60, that was, I was reading 64. 66 for it. It was like this. Wait a second, that's not what I wrote. Let's get it. I also will choose their delusions. So the Almighty's saying he's going to choose their delusions, right? And I will bring their fears upon them, because when I called, none answered. When I spake, they did not hear. But when but they did evil before my eyes and chose that which I delighted not. So he's going to deal with them and send them a strong delusion. If you know what a delusion is, it's like how they say a mirage when people are in the desert and they think there's water and everything and they run is just the sand is is an illusion or it'll send a delusion or it's just a mirage. So because he called unto a people, just like he says many are called or few are chosen, he calls and this gospel goes out to many people, but not everyone answers. Because they're like, oh, well, you know, I, I, I'm i still working on this, and I, I, I still got to grow, and I'm still a babe. And they use all these excuses for repenting. Now, if you want to say my faith has to grow stronger, or my prayer life one needs to grow stronger, or my reading life, or my fasting life, that stuff is just built upon your on, on your faith, praying in the Ruach HaKadosh, understandable. But you don't need to grow into repenting from cigarettes. You don't need to grow into repenting from telling lies. These things it says in the day you hear my Lord, the Almighty's voice, harden not your heart. It says, so when I called unto you, you didn't listen. And because of that, I'm going to send a strong delusion. And you're not going to have the ear to hear or the eye to see. So let's keep going. Revelations 20, starting at verse 1. Revelations 20, verse 1. There we go. 
And I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit and the great chain in his hand. And he laid hold onto the dragon, the old serpent, which the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years, and cast him into the bottomless pit to shut him up and to seal upon him, that he should deceive the nations no more, till a thousand years should be fulfilled, and after that he must be loose a season. So, we see the where the Almighty sent a delusion to where you'll believe a lie, or to where you'll be deceived. And we see now where the wicked one sends a strong delusion, or he deceives you, he brings deception in. Now one is because the wicked one, the wicked one is because the wicked one knows that you're living in sin, and he'll indulge in sin, so he'll throw that at you. And the other one is because the Most High, because he called you to salvation. So we're going to get to the Most High one that we dealt in 66 in a little bit, but I'm going to show you there's a lot of people that are deceived and there's a difference between you have some brothers and sisters that's just growing more and under understanding they may just not have the information needed to be at the place where you're at versus people that are deceived and okay with being deceived like the people that stayed for years the Baptist years of Methodist Episcopalian Ap uh, Apostolic Pentecostal uh, Seventh-day Adventist Jehovah Witness Catholic for years you stay in a congregation, you've been reading your Bible, you were deceived. Because there's no way you could read this Bible and see what your congregation is doing and say, hey, that's not lining up. This is not lining up. This is not lining up. You were deceived to think that these congregations are in truth. There is no denomination. Either you're in truth or you're not. Either you're a follower of the Holy Scripture or you're a follower of man. Either you're a blind follower or you're following the raw Hakadish. So let's keep going. So the wicked one brings a strong delusion. I'm going to finish this. We'll read it verse 10. And I saw the thrones, and they sat upon the thrones, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Yeshua, and for the word of the Most High. And they had not worshipped the beast, neither the image, neither that received the mark upon their foreheads or, or their hands. And they have lit reign with Amashik a thousand years. But the rest of the dead lived not again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. Blessed and holy is he that have a part in the first resurrection. On such the second death have no power. But they shall be the priests unto the Almighty and unto Christ, the Messiah, the Mashiach, and shall reign with him a thousand years. So, my main point is the wicked one would deceive people too. So how do we know which one is which? 2 Corinthians chapter 2. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, I mean. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, we're going to start at verse 1. get it therefore seeing <clears throat> we have this ministry we have received mercy we faint not having renounced the hidden things of dishonesty and not uh, handling the word of God deceitfully check this out but by manifestation of the truth commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of the Almighty but if our gospel be hid uh oh it is hid to them that are lost so if this gospel be hid to these atheists or these people that want to stay Baptist, Methodist, Episcopalian, Pentecostal, Apostolic, all these denominations, it says if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. Why is that? In whom the God of this world, the wicked one, have blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Amashia, which is the image of the Almighty, should shine upon them. So we see these people are deceived. These people are blinded. This is why the Messiah says, leave the Pharisees alone. If the blind lead of the blind, both are going to fall in this ditch. This is why he says, do as the Pharisees say, but not as they do. Because the Pharisees had the perfect manner of the law. That's why the Apostle Paul said, I, I was a Pharisee. I had the perfect manner of the law. They believed in angels, and they believed in the resurrection, and the Sadducees didn't believe in these things, and the scribes believed in something else. So they had the perfect manner of the law, but they were living in hypocrisies. They were living in... Uh, disobedient they're doing it off the precept of man and the custom of man and not of the most high they were disallowing the scriptures just to appease these customs of the elders and whatnot so we see now that these people by the wicked one are deceived you try to tell them about the Christmas tree you try to tell them about the Sabbath you try to tell them about these things and they'll read it in their mind those, those I mean they'll read it with their own eyes but in their mind their flesh wants a reason to justify this. And they'll say, man, I don't see nothing wrong with us just getting a Christmas tree and decorating it. 
I don't see nothing wrong with just doing Halloween or letting your daughter or your son go to the prom for where they're going to be doing dancing. They shouldn't listen to music. They shouldn't drink and alcohol, doing all this stuff. I don't see what's wrong with me going ahead and getting some Thanksgiving, uh, going to a Thanksgiving party or doing this. And in their mind, their flesh, they're deceived. They're deceived because you read it with the scripture, but then your flesh deceives you and say no nah, this not, the almighty's almighty's probably not even tripping on that the gospel is bigger than this the almighty's about love and joy and peace he's not worried about if you celebrate these pagan holidays he's not worried man you know even if i use a ouija board he'll be okay with it long as i'm not you know doing it all the time i don't see the almighty getting mad with homosexuality and doing all this stuff the almighty's bigger than that he's about saving souls and these people are deceived it says, if our gospel be hid, it's hid to them that are lost. Because if a person is being called to the gospel, the Almighty's called them to salvation. Apostle Paul said, I was not disobedient to that heavenly calling. When the Almighty came, called me, and I end up in that, uh, I end up being at a Pentecostal church. After about my third time reading the Bible, I'm like, Pastor, why aren't we celebrating these feast days when we see in the New Testament he celebrates? Oh, Pastor, why is your wife preaching to us when it says... Not to absorb authority over me. Oh, Pastor, why do you have a cross? And why do you have this dove? And why do you have a bookstore in your congregation when the Bible says he whipped out these people and said, my house is a house of prayer? And why are you doing car washes and bake sales and stuff in the church? That's not what the church is supposed to be, a house of prayer. And after about the third time, because me being hungry for the Holy Scriptures, being hungry and trying to follow his word and try to please the Most High, the Heavenly Father, I'm going to uh, appease and appeal to this word i'm gonna put this word above anything what man could bring to me except if it lines up with this word and then i was like man i gotta get out of that hellhole church i gotta get out of that false church because my heart was right towards the most high but if i want to dip and dab in sin oh this church is good because really i'm really secretly living in sin anyway so if they're living in hypocrisy it's not even going to bother me because they're, um, if their candle's not bright and my candle's not bright, I'll stay a Baptist forever. I'll stay a Pentecostal apostolic forever. It don't matter. It doesn't penetrate the flesh. It doesn't crucify the flesh. Because they're living in hypocrisy and, deep, and behind closed doors, I'm living in hypocrisy. But when you're trying to live holy and please the Most High, and you see these things ain't right, you're like, man, let me get out of this hellhole church. They're using it. We just read how it says we haven't used the word of the Almighty deceitfully. My old congregation was using the word of the Almighty deceitfully, and I had to get out of there. It says those that are clean, leave those that live in error. It says when you're clean and you're really serving the Almighty, you get out of those hellhole churches, out of those hellhole congregation and camps, whatever, whatever they call themselves. You get out of those places unless you deceived. Because there's no way you can see in the scripture that Christmas is of the Most High when you have no scripture to back it up. You research it. You see that it comes from paganism. You see that it's not of the Most High. And yet you say, oh, it's of God. You deceived. If you're going to say something's of the Most High, then you need to have scripture. Why do you pray? Oh, it says my house is prayer. Why do you fast? Because it says we fast. Some things come out not by prayer and fasting. Why do you sing songs? Because it says sing unto him a new song. Praise the Almighty with the tremble. Praise the Almighty with the heart. Oh, so everything we do, why do we do defeat washing? Because Christ said to do this. Why do you teach the gospel? Because it says, hey, he gave some apostle, prophet, pastors, teachers, deacons, teachers. We see scripture to support anything we do that we give credence to the Most High. So when you celebrate Christmas or Thanksgiving or Halloween and all this stuff, what scripture do you have to support this? You don't have any. So you deceived by the God of this world. So let's keep going. Go ahead and give me Hebrews chapter 3. Hebrews chapter 3. I thank the Almighty because I was witnessing to this, uh, my foreman on my job, and he believes in the Bible, and he, he seems like an honest brother. Uh, well, he's not a brother. He's not a brother in the Almighty yet, but he seems like an honest gentleman because he goes to a Pentecostal church or apostolic church, which I used to be Pentecostal apostolic. But he'll research this stuff, and he actually came to the conclusion, this is a European dude, and he says, yeah, man, those people in Israel are not the real Jews. And I showed him the scriptures and whatnot, and he went back and researched it. And now he believes that the, that the Hebrew Israelites were people of color. Now, I'm not at the point where he acknowledges as the, us as the, the Hebrews, even though I told him. He's more like, well, there's some super dark Mexicans, there's some super dark... Uh, Middle Eastern people, people from India, 
did, did, how do we know that he, he was black or a Negro or whatnot? How do we know he just was in a dark Middle Eastern and whatnot? So, you know, I'm working on him, chiseling him. But he acknowledges that those people in Israel right now, those false Turkish Khazar people, are not the Hebrew Israelites. That's a step in the right direction. This is a European. Because a lot of Europeans, even though they believe in the Bible, their heart is not ready to accept that who they believe is their savior is a person of color. As much as they say they have the spirit and they believe in the Holy Scriptures and all that, few people that are European or Asian or any other nationality, few people I personally seen can accept that their savior was a black man, what they call black, but Hebrew Israelite. It's hard to find these people, and they're out there. There's people that really love the Holy Scriptures and really love truth, and if it's in the book and it's rightly divided, they'll walk in it. There's a lot of a lot of them out there, but I just personally haven't met a lot of them. So it's first, it's the first time I've seen a European take on the the Scriptures, research it, and then walk in it to a certain degree. So what are we at? Hebrews chapter three. We're going to start at verse twelve. Let's get it. Take heed. This is what it's talking about. Take heed. Brethren, lest there be any of you an evil heart of unbelief. What? Departing from the living almighty, right? But exhort one another daily, while well, it's called day, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. So how does the wicked one deceive these people? You wonder, man, how does the wicked one deceive all these people? Because if there's sin in your heart, then it's so much easier. You're already out the city of refuge. You're already out the will of the Almighty. You're already sinning. So it's easy for the wicked one to put that false doctrine or put that false teaching or put that doubt or put that unbelief in you. Because you already want to celebrate Christmas or you already want to do these or watch this movie. So it's nothing to follow a congregation that doesn't preach against it. I already want to be gay and then one of the largest churches in Texas I believe is a homosexual church and so it's like oh I can't go to that church that preached against homosexual but I'll go to this church they believe in the Bible and they they're okay because you have the deceitfulness of sin so it's nothing for the God of this world to deceive you that you believe a lie because you never had a heart to fully repent from sin you never had the heart to live holy and righteous clean unseparated separated onto the most high I, this is the problem I have with most people that come to true Hebrews United and visit because I hold them accountable to the word of the Almighty. And then and they, for whatever reason, they don't like the fact that they have to live holy. They don't like the fact that they have to live separate unto the Almighty. Some of them don't like the fact that, no, you don't watch no movies with cussing and lying and nudity and all this stuff. You're supposed to be holy. Why are you watching Harry Potter? The Almighty condemns witchcraft. It says that's an abomination. And if you found a witch or a wizard or a necromancer or a sorcerer, you're supposed to stone them. That's all. The Almighty utterly detests that abomination. But I'm going to go ahead and buy the whole DVD and read, have all the books of Harry Potter. What kind of sense that makes? And, and yet you're still holy. You're still separate onto the Almighty watching these witchcraft movies. Teenage, uh, teenage witch, Sabrina, teenage witch, and charmed and all this foolishness. Man, that, that, there's a difference. It says that, that I may put a difference between holy and unholy, clean and unclean, righteous and unrighteous, that you may become a peculiar people. Now, we don't walk the same. We don't talk the same. We don't watch the same things. We don't dress the same. We don't do the same. We don't eat the same food as these unbelievers. That's what being holy is. You separate onto the Most High. But yet you want to do the same thing. And then when they come to True Hebrews United and the bar is here, which is not higher than the Bible. Here's the, the bar and here's the Holy Scriptures. I'm just bringing everyone to the bar of repentance to live holy. Yeah, oh, man. Well, I, oh, man, I don't know. It's kind of legalistic. Oh, it's kind of all. Oh, I, I, I go to hell then. What do you else you want me to say? Be blessed and mighty favored. How are you going to be blessed disobeying the book? Go to the lake of fire. If you want to go to the lake of fire, go to the lake of fire. There's nothing I could do. In your mind and in your heart, you don't want to serve the Most High. He says, if you love me, keep my commandments. If you love me, keep my commandments. So when I come and I say, hey, if you love the Most High, you're saying you're a child of the Most High, you're a Hebrew Israelite, you're the seed of Judah, I'm from this tribe, whatever cliche, I'm a child of the Most High. Now, it's something, change your name to Israel at the end, all this stuff, these, especially these Facebook people do, get all this stuff, making your little things, doing all your stunts, fringes, that drag 10 feet behind you, whatever, whatever you choose to do, at the end of the day, 
you need to be keeping his commandments. No matter how you put your name and put Y Israel at the end of your name for your Facebook name or whatever, at the end of the day, when it says, where do you live, where are you from, Jerusalem, all that stuff on Facebook, at the end of the day, are you keeping his commandments? And if the answer is no, get ready to burn in the lake of fire, except you repent. Because this is a good day to repent. This is a good day to acknowledge yourself and say, man, you know what, I'm not living up to the mark that the Holy Scriptures is saying. Not what Simon's saying, but I read this. And it's condemning this behavior, and I'm doing this behavior, and I'm not repenting from this behavior. How am I going to make it into the kingdom? I'm doing something which he condemns, and yet I still want to be saved. How is that possible? It's not. And so when teachers come, and preachers, and pro apostles, and prophets, just like Jeremiah and Ezekiel come and say, Repent, mend your ways. Turn from your wicked ways and your evil doings. They hated them. They despised them. They said, don't prophesy. Go to another city and prophesy. Prophesy unto us smooth things. Why every time you come, you always talk about destruction and famine and pestilence? Because you disobey it. That's why they always did it, rising up early in the morning, and yet their heart was hardened. So what happened? The Almighty sent a delusion on these people, just like today. Let's keep going, though. John, chapter 3. Gospel of John, chapter 3. And we're going to start at verse 16 because this is what they love. They love that John 3.16. Let's get it. <clears throat> John 3.16. For the Almighty so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son. Those who ever believe in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. This is what they say. This is what they deceive people say. See, I'm not condemned. I believe. I believe in the Bible. You know, and I mean, I may not do the Sabbath or sometimes I eat pork, but I'm a good person. I don't I don't be killing people and I don't be stealing people. And he just wants you to be a good person. And they don't acknowledge that you be telling lies. You do be eating pork. Or say they don't believe that. Say say they oh I don't really do everything, but I'm still a good person and, and I, I have the I have the most high in my heart. The Almighty knows my heart. It says the heart is deceitful above measure. Who could know it? But it says, I have them in my heart. If you have them in your heart, he says, if you love me, keep my commandments. You're breaking this commandment. So thus means you don't have them in your heart because you can't serve two masters. Either you love the one and hate the other. Either you cleave the one and despise the other. So if you really had them in your heart, you'll be living holy. But that's okay. That's okay. Let's just keep reading. Let's just say you think, as long as you have them in your heart. Let's keep going. For God uh, sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that through the world him he might be saved. See, I'm not condemned because I believed I'm saved. Let's keep going. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already. See, I believe. I believe in the Bible. I may not be doing everything, but as long as I believe that he died for my sins and rose again on the third day, I believe in the Messiah. He came down in the flesh and died for my sins, so I'm not condemned. I'm going to make it when I die. I'm going to go to a better place. Let's keep going. Verse 19. And this is the condemnation. What? That light is coming to the world. And men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. So now, this is where the condemnation is. Because you say you believe, but you don't love the light. Because your deeds are evil, you dwelling in darkness. This is why we read in Isaiah 4. He says, A, hey, because I call and none answered. It says, I'm going to send a delusion on these people. Because they love to do the things, they delighted in the things that, they, that I, they did the things that I delighted not. Because you want to do things I hate, I'm going to send a delusion on you. You're going to stay a Baptist until you die. That's what, I'm going to send that delusion on you. You're going to stay a Jehovah Witness. You're going to stay an Apostolic, Seventh-day Adventist, Mormon, Episcopalian. You're going to stay all this stuff, Southern Baptist. You're going to be on all this foolishness, all this falsehood until you die. And once you die, you still going to go to the lake of fire because you love it and make it a lie because your heart wasn't honest before the most high because your deeds were evil because you love and you and that Christmas tree is going straight to the lake of fire with it because you love that stuff. You love the things that the almighty don't like. Let's keep going. Give me Acts chapter four. Acts. Now give me Matthew. 
chapter 13, and we'll get back to Acts in a little bit. Matthew chapter 13. Pulpit next time, my little elector. Matthew chapter 13. Hopefully, you guys bring your Bibles when you guys listen to this so you can read it with your own eyes <clears throat> instead of just listening. Matthew chapter 13, starting at verse 10. Let's get it. It says, And the disciples came and said unto him, Why speaketh unto them in parables? So he's saying, Why why are you speaking to these people in parables? We still recording. Good job. Okay, maybe I need just need to clean the SD card. Amen. And it says, Because he said unto them, Because it was given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it is not given. So what? He is not giving them the mysteries of the most high of heaven. He is specifically not giving a group of people to understand the things of the most high. Let's keep going. For whosoever have to him shall be given, and he shall have more abundance. But whoever have not from him it shall be taken away, even that he have. Therefore I speak unto them in parables, because seeing, seeing see not, and hearing they hear not, and do not understand. And in them is fulfilled the prophecy of, of Sayus, we just read that, right? Which saith, By hearing you shall hear, and, and shall not understand it, and seeing you shall see, and not perceive. For the people's heart was waxed and gross, and their ears were dull of hearing, and their eyes have they closed, lest at any time they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears, and should understand with their heart, and should be converted, and I shall heal them. So he says, I blinded these people on purpose that they might not be saved. And it's hard for people, especially these Christian people, to understand what the Almighty came down and sent a prophet, Isaiah, and the Messiah came down as well, and specifically spoke unto them with the intentions for them to not understand this on purpose so they cannot be saved. Why is that? Why did he set these people up for failure? Because prior to these people coming, their heart was gross. Their heart was hardened. They were stiff necked and stubborn. So I'm going to come just to be a witness against you. Just so in the day of judgment, you can't say I never came to you. Because I came to you and you disobeyed. I came to you, you sin, see, show someone some scripture about, look, man, it says not only doing the same, but having pleasure in them that do them. Look, we can't be looking at this stuff, these movies. And I'm like, man, you know what, you're right, man. I got to give up some of these movies. I got to throw this stuff away. Even though I have a collection of movies, this stuff is against the most high. Let me throw this movies away. Let me put that, those, that music away, all this stuff. And then you give it to other people. Well, uh, uh, well, you know, I don't really see nothing as long as it. What is so hard of giving music away and picking up godly music? And the, the, the thing that <coughs> proves me right is because the same people that fight to keep secular music, it'll be this, like, almost all of them. I'm like, how much music do you have that is godly, that is, a, that is giving edification and giving glory to the Most High? Oh, you know, I don't really have none. So let me get this straight. You won't take the initiative to go find music that glorifies the Most High, but then you'll you'll take the initiative to defend and to fight to keep secular music. So you, ah, oh, well, you know, it, you know, what about music that you know it's not really saying nothing against the Bible and this and that? But you don't even have not one song in your possession that gives glory to the Most High. Or when we have service, I'm like, hey, what song you want to... They don't even know... Some of these people don't even know one song that they could sing to themselves when it says sing unto the Most High. So that tells me you don't even sing to the Most High, but yet you'll be singing the lyrics of these worldly songs. Yep, that's right. Real spiritual. Yep. I, you're super filled with the Ruach HaKadish. That's how we do it. Let's keep going. Because <coughs> I'm not dealing with music today. Let's keep going. Romans chapter 1. Romans chapter 1. We're going to start at verse 24. <clears throat> Wherefore God also through them gave them up unto uncleanliness to the lust of their own heart 
to dishonor their own bodies between themselves. So homosexuality and whatnot. But it says the Almighty gave them up. The all gave these people up because they their heart was so hardened, he gave them up. Let's keep going. Who came the truth of the Most High into a lie and worship and serve the creature more than the Creator, which they do today with their idols as well, who is blessed forever. Amen. <clears throat> For this cause, the Almighty gave them up to vile affections. He let them go. He put no restrictions. Oh, you want to do it? Go ahead and go. Go ahead and go. He gave them up. Let's keep going. <clears throat> Bio affection for even their women did change the natural use in that which is not against nature. And also, too, bringing up this natural use, the Almighty created women for the man. So, whenever, right here, this scripture is talking about, directly talking about lesbians are changing their natural use, taking it in the exit only. Doing things you are, even if you're doing it with another man, doing things that is not your natural use and whatnot, you change your natural use, which is against the Most High. But also, your natural use, the natural, uh, how the Almighty made you to be to be used or made you to work. I'm trying to make it so you don't sound like a robot and whatnot. So that's that's what I'm trying to do. How the Almighty created you. There you go. He made you to for the man. And to, he made you to be a helpmate. So when a woman feels like they're equal or above, or they talk down to their husband, or they question their husband, if, if your husband's being stupid and he's spending mo rent money on video games and sp yeah, yeah, of course, of course, you don't just let stupidity just rise up and go. You know, you got to say something, stand up for righteousness, right? But when you're out of order, that's not your natural use. That's not how you're naturally supposed to operate. That's not what he created you for. He didn't create you to absorb authority over your husband. That's not what he did. So, this scripture isn't saying that directly. The exact meaning of this is dealing with lesbians and doing things you ought not. <clears throat> using your body in the way you're not not. But you still are changing your natural use when you get outside the order of the Most High. So let's keep going. Which is against nature. Verse 27. And likewise also the man leaving the natural use of the woman, burning their lust, working, uh, lust one to another, man with man working that which is unseemly, receiving themselves recompense, and heir which is, uh, which is, was meet, which is acceptable. You're going to receive recompense, and you're going to go to the lake of fire, which is acceptable. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. So it says he gave them up. He gave them up. Right? Because you want to be deceived and your heart is a heart and you want to go against the Almighty, He lets you go. At some point when a parent chastise you, matter of fact, go. Do whatever you want. I don't even care anymore. Oh, you, I, keep, I put you on punishment. I took your TV away. I did this. I did that. I did this. You still want to live in sin. You still want to go out and chase women. You still want to game ban. Hey, go ahead. Do whatever. So be it. Where the chips fall, they may. Whether you in jail, whether you end up dead, whether you end up with AIDS. I tried to correct you. You didn't want correction. So go. Let's keep going. <clears throat> Being filled, verse this, with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy and murder, debate, malignity, whisperers. A lot of you guys debate all the time, by the way, saying you're filled with the Ruach HaKadish, but you're debating all the time on Facebook. You better question yourself. Let's keep going. Deceit, mal malignity, whisperers, backbiters, haters of God, despitefers, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, without natural understanding, covenant breakers. You saying you enter in a covenant with the Most High? You get baptized, or are you saying you're in a covenant with the Most High, and then you go back to the world, and then you come back, and then you go back to the world, and then you come back? How are you married to the Most High? Because it says we're supposed to be a spouse to the mo to the bridegroom when he comes down. We're supposed to be the bride of the Most High. It's a chaste version, and you're coming in and out. Warm today, cold tomorrow. Warm today, cold tomorrow. How, how's that? How are you making a how do you just make a covenant with your wife or your wife makes a covenant with you and two weeks later she cheats on you and break, break wedlock? The same thing with the Most High, dealing with covenant breakers. Let's keep going. Without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful, who knowing the judgment of God, they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only doing the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. Oh, well, you know, I don't be game banging to listen to this, but you listen to rap. You have pleasure in these people that do it. You have pleasure in people that are doing things you are not, these Harry Potter books and all that stuff. It says not only doing the same, but you have pleasure in them that do it. So how are you going to get around that? So because of this stuff, the Almighty gave them up to a reprobate mind. 
and send them a strong delusion that, that he will not save these people. These people will not make it in. But you have an opportunity today. When you see these scriptures and it says, you day you hear the Almighty's voice harden out your heart, you heard his voice today. And I'm not, I'm not, my voice you hear, don't worry about me. Worry about the scriptures you just read. You read these scriptures about, hey man, we can't be living in sin. Hey, we got to get these things right. Hey, if there's something in this book and I know I'm disobeying it, then I need to repent from it. I need to come up higher. I need to come up to the mark. I need to live clean. The Almighty is, He is the bridegroom and He's expecting the bride. And no one, there's a sin, you can't turn a whore into a housewife. No one it wants to marry a whore. No one wants to marry a whore. So if He's the bridegroom and He's coming for a bride, He wants her to be a virgin, chaste. He wants her to be clean. He wants to smell good, look good. He doesn't want no whore dipping, dabbing in sin. That's not what he's coming back for. He's coming back for his saints. He's coming back for his children. He ain't coming back for no wild grapes, no tares. He ain't coming back for no thorns. He, no, nah, he ain't coming back for that. He's coming back for his harvest. Let's keep going. Go ahead and give me, uh, we almost done. A couple more scriptures. Give me uh, Isaiah 66 and 4. We're going to go back to that. Isaiah 66 and 4. Amen. <clears throat> Let's get it. <clears throat> I will also choose their delusions, and I will bring their fears upon them. Because when I called, none did answer. And when I spake, they did not hear. But they did evil before my eyes and chose that in which I delighted not. So what happened? The Almighty gave them up to a reprobate mind. He says, I'll choose your delusion. Because it says, we read, we just read in Romans, they, they kept not to retain the knowledge of the Most High, but chose wickedness. So what happened? The Almighty says, all right, I got you. I'm going to let you. I'm going to give you up. I'm going to let you believe a lie. Oh, you want to live in sin? You want to celebrate paganism? Oh, you want to keep that cross? Then I'll let you be a Catholic, because that's all they do is run around with crosses. Oh, you want to do that? I'll let you go ahead. You like idolatry so much? Go ahead. Keep praying to Mother Mary. Keep praying. Go ahead. Keep doing that. Oh, oh, you want to? Oh, you want to believe you don't have to be baptized? Okay, go ahead. Oh, baptism is just the word. Okay, even though you see all these scriptures in the New Testament, people getting immersed in water, but whatever. Go ahead. Go ahead. Don't get baptized so you don't have remission of sin, so you die in your iniquity and get sent to the lake of fire. Go ahead. Keep it pushing. Let's keep going. Second Thessalonians chapter two. Our gospel be hid is hid to them that are lost. Amen. That's why I don't even uh I used to try to come hard to get people to see these scriptures. But now dealing with people, I just like pray about it. Because if a person's if a, if a the Almighty's really calling a person to salvation, they're gonna adhere to the gospel. And they may not receive it that day or that week or that month. But eventually, if they're really seeking the Most High, and they're really seeking these holy scriptures, and trying to get His Spirit, they're going to walk in truth. And so you planted the seed, and I'm not going to force it to grow. Hey, pray. Oh, well, I don't really see. Pray about it. I already showed you the scriptures. Pray about it. 2 Thessalonians 2, verse 10. Get it. And with all deceivableness, uh-oh, we talking about deceivableness, of unrighteousness, and them that perish, uh-oh, because they receive not a love for the truth, that they might be saved. We just read that. If our gospel be hid, is hid to them that are lost, who the God of this world have blinded their eyes. And it says, with all deceivableness and unrighteousness to them that perish, because you had not a love for the truth, but a lie. You rather perish believe have a false belief that you are saved in your condition then to acknowledge that how you're living is not pleasing to the most high repent from this wickedness and to walk into salvation it's hard for people when I came and I realized that I invested all this ties and offering and time and energy in a false church and this whole time I was on my way to the lake of fire I, I felt deceived this dude deceived me for three years for three years 
I was going out there outreaching, knocking on doors, inviting people, doing barbecues, doing this, doing this, doing this, trying to get people to come to the gospel, right? And sure enough, man, this dude was teaching false truth. But I didn't just say, oh, well, no, nah, no, nah, that's not true. That's not true. You know, I'm a Pentecostal. It's cool. I'm apostolic. We good. We good. And just believe a lie. No, I, man, I'm not even saved in this condition. Repent it. Start learning more truth. I'm going to follow the word. He's a false preacher, but I'm going to follow the word because the word is not false. And then I'm going to walk into salvation. And that's the mindset you got to have if you want to make it in. Let's keep going. It says, with all deceivableness and unrighteousness them that perish, for they have not a love for the truth, but to believe a lie. If there's something I'm teaching you, and you disagree, research it. Call me up. Research it. You'll be surprised to say, hey, Simon, you are right. Or Simon, you know what, you're right, but I also found more information to prove that you're right. Or Simon, you know what, have you considered this and this and this scripture too? And go from there. But to automatically deny something, simply because it goes against what you believe and you don't even research it that's wrong because that means you're a blind follower because if you can't answer questions if someone comes to me and say hey simon uh, if this is this then how is this and what about this scripture and how does that tie into this scripture and i can't answer that question that means i need to go back and study because either one or two things either i'm right and i just need more scripture to bring to the table or i'm wrong and now I'm going to walk in truth and become even a more powerful teacher. It doesn't take away what he called me to do, which is save souls. The Almighty called me to save souls. And it says the whole, the rule of Hakadish leads you and guides you to all truth. So if I don't get all truth, I should be getting more truth every year. I should become a more powerful minister every single year. Because he's revealing more to me in this scripture. And in that book. And in that book. And in that book. And I'm able to put more and more pieces together. So I'm going to be more powerful teacher, more powerful minister. And so it doesn't bother me when more information comes my way because it only makes me better to teach and to edify others. Let's keep going. Last scripture. John 16, 13. Gospel John 16, 13. Last scripture. Praise the Almighty. How about when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth, for he shall not speak of himself, but whoever he shall hear, he shall speak. That shall he speak, and he shall shew you all things. So, the fact that it says when the Holy Spirit come, it will show you all things, that lets you know that whether you're a brother or just came to the gospel, just got baptized, or whether you're a minister, every year the, the, the Royal HaKadish gives you more information. And so to feel that you have to have all information, that's wrong. These ministers, we still recording? Cool, good. These ministers that feel like they have to be able to answer every question and have to know it all, that's wrong. Because it says we're one piece of the puzzle. We're one piece of the puzzle. If you're an apostle, a prophet, a evangelist, a pastor, a teacher, an elder, a bishop, a deacon, you're just one piece of the puzzle. And he doesn't give all gifts to one person. Okay, you got the gift of prophesying, you got interpretation dreams, you got you got the speaking in tongues, you got interpretation in tongues, you got healing, you got uh, administration, word of wisdom, word of knowledge. He doesn't give all knowledge to one man, and he doesn't give all gifts to one man. There is no one man show. So, us knowing this, that I'm just one part of the body, there might be a brother that come that's a minister or whatnot, or a brother that come that knows marriage top to bottom. And another brother knows the oneness of the Almighty top to bottom. And another minister knows the whole genealogy. Another minister dissects all the meats and unclean meats and all the modern day foods. Doritos, this, 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 this. We're just one piece of the puddle. No man can be, There is no one man show. And so me understanding, I know that there's brothers and sisters out there. And one brother Almighty may reveal something to him. And hey, that might impart on me and make me a better minister. And vice versa. But I have a love for the truth. I'm not going to stay and believe a lie. If there's something I'm teaching that is wrong three years ago, and then I come into truth, then right when I come to truth, I start teaching what's correct. What's correct. And we move on. And we move on. As the Spirit gives me more information, I teach what I learn. I teach what the Almighty gives me. And that's the true student. There is no teacher, really. All of us are students. There's ministers like Jeremiah, Ezekiel, uh, the apostles, the prophets. These ministers still 
understand there is still Daniel as powerful as Daniel is he had a dream and he still had to fast to get understanding of it and even that he asked questions and he said this is not, he said it's not for you to know that and then even he said when the, uh, the when the Messiah came down to the Apostles he says there's many things I want to give to you but your hearts aren't even ready for it so that lets you know even the Apostles didn't know everything because they weren't even ready they had to grow in time and understanding and build their faith and build their fasting and build their prayer life and get stronger than the Most High before he'll even give them that information and these are the Apostles he says there's many things I want to give unto you but you guys aren't even ready for it yet you guys aren't even ready for it yet and so right now giving my call out hey if you want to seek the, the Most High give your heart to the Most High hey make that phone call True Hebrews United 501 Oh, 619-501-1375. If you're from out of the country, like some of the people I talk to and whatnot, hit me up on the Facebook, the Messenger. All the people that watch the videos, forgive me if I don't get back to you. I'm typically not a Facebook person, but I definitely try to get on Facebook to um, to uh, get on there. I'll try to get on there Wednesday. Try to get a, definitely Sabbath day if you want to call me. Sabbath night, that's the best time to get, get with me and whatnot. And I will return the phone calls and whatnot uh, to some lady, Whitney... Hopkins or something, Munya B, all the people that waved at me and whatnot, I will definitely get with you guys and uh, holler at you. Munya, I definitely called you today. <clears throat> you didn't answer or whatnot, but I know your time zone is different. You probably sleep right now. But um, I definitely will return a phone call. But hey, make those steps to the most high. Right now is the time to get right with the most high. Right now is the time to make those steps. Time's running out. You got every day is a day closer to you dying, and every day is a day closer to the Almighty's. Uh, opening these seals and blowing these trumpets and ready to pass judgment on this world. It's a day closer that the wicked one is going to make war against the saints and prevail against them. It's a day closer to where he's going to put destruction on this planet. And he's going to have a cutoff time. Because when he, when we see this cutoff time in the days of Noah, when the flood started, it says Noah was a preacher of righteousness. And it took him about a hundred years to build this ark. So they had a hundred years to repent. But they didn't. And so when the first drop of rain came, or the first geyser came up, when the first drop came, that's judgment. So in between these 40 days and 40 nights, there was no repentance. It's judgment now. He ain't receiving no repentance. Oh, okay, I, I'm sorry now. They're running to the highest mountain. Sorry, sorry, Almighty. I'll get it right. Give me one more chance. No, you're done. It's judgment. It took 40 days, and he wiped out everything, right? When the Almighty passed judgment, when this mark of the beast and the Almighty starts to blow just one seal or blow, let loose one seal or one trumpet, that's it. That means everybody on the planet that didn't get in this gospel repent from their sin, you done. There is no, there is no, oh, I'll get it. It's judgment. Now, this judgment is going to take some years when he blows these trumpets. It's going to take some years, three and a half years plus. <coughs> but that's it. These people, oh, I'll just get my head cut off. Oh, oh, well, you know, it don't matter. It's judgment time. And so you got time right now. You got time right now to get it right. Make that phone call, 619-501-1375. If you have some questions, I don't come to debate, but we can open up the scriptures and just open up the scriptures and make both of us come to understand it. I am a humble minister. <clears throat> when, it's time, when it's time to open up the book, if you want to debate, don't even waste my time. But if you want to open up the scriptures and go, then a... Let's do it. If you need more understanding, hey, I'm here for you. With all that said, being done, keep standing. Don't drop standards. Give the Almighty a hand clap. Shalom.